glory to his name. Amen. He is worthy of all our praise. Amen. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Let's go ahead and begin with our announcements. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get right into Bible study tonight. Uh, let's remember, we can submit our prayer requests online at the church's website, reallovokc.org. Also, through the church's Facebook page, just search for Shield of Faith Baptist Church OKC. And you should be able to find our Facebook page with no problem. So you can submit prayer requests through the messenger or, again, the church website, reallovokc.org. Bible study each and every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, right here where you are currently watching this video. Amen. And, of course, we have been talking about church on Wednesday. We've been talking about church. And so we will continue to do that uh, through the month of March. Amen. Also, if you are interested in finding out more about the church media and communication ministry and being a part of it, there is a link in the comment section of this video. And so uh, be sure to click on that, find out more. And if you would like to be a part of it, uh, be sure and let us know. Amen. Uh, and again, Wednesday, we're talking about church. Uh, Sundays, we've been talking about Jesus is greater. Uh, coming from the book of Hebrews. And uh, this past Sunday, we just did chapter 6. And so we'll be moving into chapter 7 of the book of Hebrews this coming Sunday. Uh, definitely a great study. Amen. And so we look forward to uh, continue uh, continuing our journey in the book of Hebrews. Free text messaging service is available. You can si sign up, uh, subscribe for the free text messaging service by texting the keyword real love to 84576. Again, text the keyword real love. That's one word to 84576. Once you do so, you'll get a return text and have the ability to enter your name and email address to be subscribed to our email list as well. And it is a free service of the Shield of Faith Baptist Church in Oklahoma City. Members of Shield of Faith, we can submit our tithes and offering online at the church website, reallovokc.org. Just scroll down to online giving, click on it. You have the ability to enter your information. And to our guests, if you feel so led to contribute to the furtherance of this ministry, you too can visit our website at reallovokc.org. And again, just scroll down to online giving, click on it, and you have the ability to enter your information right there online. Amen. All right. So good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for tuning in to uh, Bible study uh, with Pastor Juan. This is brought to you by the Shield of Faith Baptist Church in Oklahoma City. And of course, I am Pastor Juan. Hey, man. So good evening, everyone. I see Lady Kizzy online. Um, hey, man. I see Sister Stephanie online. If you're online, let me know you're here. Type hashtag live if you are watching the replay. Hashtag replay and let me know that you were here. Hey, man. Uh, definitely a great week. Amen. In spite of, <laughs> hey amen. It was so warm yesterday and now it's freezing outside here in Oklahoma City. Hey amen. Uh, that's, that's weather in Oklahoma City. If you don't like the weather, just wait a minute. It'll change. We uh, got all seasons in the state today. Hey amen. <laughs> From snow to sun and warmer temperatures. Hey amen. And uh, just a little bit of everything. So just. Uh, don't worry. If we don't have the weather that you want right now, just just keep on. It'll come around eventually. <laughs> All right. So good evening, everyone. So we are still talking about church. Amen. And today we're actually going to be talking about other metaphors for the church. We talked about church as uh, family. Amen. We talked about church as a body. Amen. And so we're going to look at some more metaphors tonight for the church uh, in the word of God. Amen. So um, we'll go ahead and get right into that tonight. First of all, bride. The church is called the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ. The picture of the church as the bride of Christ is seen in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23 through 26, where an analogy is drawn that compares the husband and wife relationship in marriage to Christ and his bride, the church. 
Let's go ahead and look at that, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23 through 26, because the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body now as the church submits to Christ. So also wives are to submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. And so we see here in the book of Ephesians that Paul uses the analogy of Christ and his bride, the church, to encourage husbands and wives. Of course, looking at all of chapter five, to encourage husbands and wives to be mutual uh, mutually submitted one to another in Christ. Amen. Uh, but he draws that analogy of Christ and the church, his bride, uh, to help husbands and wives in marriage. Amen. Uh, so we see uh, again in chapter five, the book of Ephesians, mutual submission. Amen. Not just one way. <laughs> Amen. I know some people have a problem with that word submit, uh, but we're not going to talk about that tonight. We're just looking at the analogy itself. Amen. And to what extent does Christ love the church? To what extent does Christ love his bride? Uh, not only does he love his bride, the church, but he gave himself for her. I mean, gave himself for the church on the cross of Calvary uh, as a propitiation, a payment for our sins as the church. That is the demonstration of the love of the son, uh, Jesus Christ, for his bride, the church. And so the church is referred to as a bride. Can y'all think of some other texts that illustrate the relationship of the church as a bride? Uh, maybe not specific ones, but, it, you know, uh, at least something that would let me know <laughs> where you're thinking. Amen. Um, <clears throat> even without a specific scripture. Uh, and I don't want to say anything because you might be typing it as I'm talking. So I want to see if you come up with anything. Well, I guess I, I'd have to anyway because I may see it after. You may type it after I say it, but you may not hear me say it to after you type it. So uh, one comes to mind, obviously, uh, the parable of the ten virgins. Amen. And in the book of Revelation, uh, the church is presented to the bridegroom, Christ, as a bride. What a wonderful picture. Uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is a fulfillment of the uh, ten virgins. Amen. Uh, and, of course, there are others. But those are just some examples there of the church as a bride, as the bride, I should say. Uh, the bride of Christ. So let's continue on. Uh, the church is described as a building. Amen. Paul has emphasized that Jews and Gentiles alike are one in Christ because God abolished the wall that separated Jew from Gentile, Ephesians 2, 11 through 18. Now, Paul describes the oneness of the church under the figure of a building the church, a union of Jews and Gentiles, is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Ephesians 2.20. The apostles are collectively one of the foundational gifts designed to equip the believers and bring the church to maturity. Amen. The purpose of the gifts, he gave some to be apostles, prophets, teachers, um, Evangelists, teachers and preachers, uh, teachers and pastors, I should say. In the figure of the building, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, which may refer to the primary foundational stone at the angle of the structure by which the architect affixes a standard for the bearings of the wall 
and cross walls throughout. In Christ, the whole building, the church, is being fitted together, emphasizing Christ's work of constructing his church as the building grows when under construction. So the church as a living organism is growing as new believers are added to the building. Amen. As new believers are added to the building. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. Go ahead and read that. So then, talking to believers, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the spirit. Amen. So we see the church as a building, a building under construction with the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Amen. Uh, they are gifts to the church uh, for the purpose of uh, the edification of the church or the spiritual maturity of the church. Um, I often talk about uh, the apostolic record, our New Testament. And of course, that's built upon uh, that foundation even of the prophets of the Old Testament. So the word of God helps form that foundation because of what the apostles and prophets wrote. Jesus Christ uh, himself being the cornerstone. Without him, uh, there is no church. <laughs> the prophet spoke of him, the Messiah that would come to secure salvation. Uh, the apostle spoke of him who did come and secure that salvation and showing that he is the fulfillment of the, well, I guess that's what we're talking about in Hebrews, the fulfillment of the uh, Jewish ceremonial sacrificial system. And so he is the cornerstone, amen, that bears the weight of what is becoming the church, what is the church and what the church is becoming. Uh, without him, uh, we cannot stand based on, again, his person, who he is, and his work. Uh, in him, the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Amen. A holy temple in the Lord. Amen. So the church is a building, not, not just a building, but a building under construction. Amen. Until its completion. Amen. Uh, what a wonderful picture. All right. Priesthood. Priesthood. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, the apostle combines the figures of a building and a priesthood, stating, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. This statement is reminiscent of Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 9, where God declared that Israel was a kingdom of priests in the nation of Israel. However, only those of the tribe of Levi could serve as priests, whereas in the church, every believer is a priest. Peter indicates all believers are priests for the purpose of offering spiritual sacrifices instead of animal sacrifices. The uniqueness of the New Testament priesthood is further seen in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, where Peter refers to a royal priesthood. The church age believers are both kings and priests. In the Old Testament, it was impossible to combine both offices, for one could only be either of the Levitical line or the kingly line, the line of Judah. And of course, <laughs> this past Sunday we talked about that. That's not a totally true statement. Uh, David took the position of a priest. Solomon took the position of a priest and led worship uh, for the nation of Israel. David directed the priest <laughs> when dealing with the Ark of the Covenant. And we know that Christ is the fulfillment of 
the kingly priests or the royal priest, uh, according to uh, after the order of Melchizedek, uh, the high priest of the most high God and king of Salon. Amen. So we've just been talking about that the past week. So, um, but for the most part, amen, those are separate offices. Uh, the entire church functions as a priesthood, whereas in Israel, only Levitical line had that privilege officially. Uh, all church age believers have access to God through Christ, the church's high priest. In Israel, individual believers could approach God only through the Levitical priests, the intercessor, the mediator between man and God was the priest. All church age believers may approach God boldly at any time as we are a royal priesthood, whereas Israel could only approach God only during the particular offerings. These contrasts indicate that while both Israel and the church are called a priesthood, Israel and the church are distinct entities. Amen. And I would agree with that. Uh, the church is not a continuation of Israel, but Israel had a purpose, and that was to display the character of God, to bring forth the Messiah. Amen. Uh, we see again that the church is not a continuation of Israel, but a fulfillment of God's intention. Uh, Paul writes in the book of Romans, not all of Israel is of Israel. Amen. So there is the physical Israel and then there is spiritual Israel. Amen. So I pray that you are part of the spiritual Israel that operates under the new covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Where there is no mediator between us and God except Christ himself. But as priests, we have access to God, the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, directly because of our position in Christ. Amen. And as we talked about, we are family as the church. Amen. The children of God. Amen. And so uh, I love all those different uh, metaphors used to describe the church uh, because, you know, they all have different indications, different uh, benefits tied to those various um, metaphors. All right. So priesthood, well, royal priesthood flock. The Bible refers to the church as a flock, a beautiful, tender image depicting the relation, depicting the relationship of believers to the Lord is found in John chapter 10, verse 16, where the church is called a flock. Israel had a relationship to the Lord as sheep to a shepherd. Psalm 23, amen, very familiar psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And was called a flock. But in the Old Testament, that figure was restricted to Israel, uh, the people of God. The uniqueness about the church being a flock in Christ, the shepherd, is that this flock is composed of both Jews and Gentiles. Jesus declared, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they must hear my voice and they shall become one flock with one shepherd. Amen. Christ came to his own, but his own received him not. And obviously that's not a to uh, in totality. On the, even on the day of Pentecost, uh, Jews assembled, we have uh, the disciples of Jesus Christ who were Jews, uh, but as a whole, obviously did not embrace Jesus Christ as, as Messiah. And so he tells his, his uh, brethren, the Jews, I have other sheep, speaking of the Gentiles, which are not of this fold, the, the Jews, uh, Israel, I must bring them also and they shall hear my voice. Amen and they shall become one flock, the church being composed of Jew or Gentile. There is neither uh, bond nor free. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. Amen. We are all under one shepherd, the great shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I guess even this past Sunday, I talked about under shepherds as well. Amen. Uh, 
but we won't go back there again. So uh, the image emphasizes that members of the church as the sheep of Christ belong to him. Jesus emphasizes that the flock is my sheep. Amen. Something pastors have to get in our head. Amen. The church does not belong to the pastor. Don't belong to the deacons. Don't belong to the trustees. Don't belong. Nobody belongs to the great shepherd. Amen. We are his sheep. And I know uh, the late uh, pastor uh, Willard Dallas of Faith, Hope and Love uh, Baptist Church. One time heard him say, uh, talking about pastors being under shepherds. He said the under shepherd ain't nothing but the head sheep. <laughs> so, amen. Not to not to uh, to embrace our humility, uh, the humility that we should have as pastors, and not think of ourselves more than what we ought to. Amen. Because uh, he was talking about how sheep are dumb animals, and so pastors are nothing more than the head sheep. Amen. Not distinct from the rest of the flock. Uh, anyway, and that they are secure in His hand. Moreover, the sheep respond to the shepherd's voice. There is intimacy for uh, the shepherd uh, who knows his sheep individually and they recognize his voice and they respond to him. And of course, I referred to that scripture, uh, I think this past Sunday as well. Amen. The Lord knows those who are heals. Amen. And so uh, definitely he knows those who our heels amen we belong to him very interesting uh story illustration that i, I once um uh, was pervy to uh in a message uh pastor was speaking about how he went to i believe india and they were traveling down the road in a car and in in the pasture area there was sheep all across the road a bunch of sheep all across the road and there were two shepherds and uh, of course, they had to wait for the sheep to to be removed from the road. And the shepherd, each shepherd, just simply began to sing, and his sheep began to go to him. And the sheep, uh, which were different flocks, began to separate and follow the voice of their shepherd. Amen. And I, I can just picture that in my head. And so when Jesus said uh, that his sheep know his voice that that is emphasized by that illustration that his sheep will follow him amen and so we see the the church as a flock amen a flock of sheep amen all right now the last analogy for tonight is branches branches what an interesting analogy in john 15 jesus describes the close relationship church age believers enjoy with him as being one of the branches related to the to a vine jesus is the true vine amen while the father is the farmer who tills the land in order that the branches may bear fruit church age believers are the branches that draw their life from the vine because they are in him the branches receive their life-giving nourishment and their attachment to the vine. As they remain in the vine, they are able to grow and bear fruit. Amen. This relationship describes both union and communion of church-age believers with Christ. Christ's exhortation to the church is to abide in me. Abide means essentially remain, stay, live. In this context, it means to remain or continue in the realm in which one finds himself. The exhortation to abide in Christ is an exhortation to continue believing in him. Amen. One side note about the book of John, the gospel of John. Uh, John uses the word believing uh, which is in a specific tense in the Greek in which there is a beginning and a continuation. And so there is a beginning and a continuation. He uses the verb to believe, not to believe, but believing. He does not use the noun to believe or to have faith. 
he he purposely does not use a noun. He uses the verb believing. And that's that's an uh, interesting side note there. So uh, that's in the in the Greek there. And so uh, in the Gospel of John. And so it's a continuation, something that has a starting point and continues, uh, not a state of being as a noun, not simply to have faith, but believing in Jesus. It's an active uh, word in, in, in this normal paragraph here with branches uh, that I forgot that I saw when I accidentally went to the next one. Uh, the purpose of the branches abiding in the vine is produce food, fruit. Every branch that does, that does not bear fruit, he lifts up that it may bear fruit. The ones who continue in Christ will bear fruit. To enhance the fruit bearing process, the branches are pruned that they may bear more fruit. The figure of the vine thus demonstrates the vital relationship between the members of the Church of Christ. You know, just a uh, side note, uh, started growing tomatoes last year. <laughs> um, didn't really get to experience the harvest of tomatoes. Somebody picked all the tomatoes off and ate them. Uh, and I won't say who that is. Uh, not any of the two-footed people in the house. But on to my point, uh, the tomatoes would produce greater fruit as as the, the vine, the plant was pruned. Uh, because pruning allows more energy and nourishment to be concentrated on the fruit and not to be wasted. And so I understand the pruning process, the cutting away of unnecessary so that the, 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 the energy of the plant can be concentrated on bearing fruit. And so we have some things in our lives. We have some things uh, and, and, and maybe not situations we go through. That's not what I'm talking about. But maybe we got some stinking thinking. Maybe we got some bad attitudes. Uh, you know, maybe we, uh, you know, have uh, various areas in our life that we need to repent from. Amen. And so the Lord prunes us so that we may bear fruit, so that our energy can be focused more on bearing that fruit. Amen. 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 So, uh, uh, good evening, Kevin. Amen. Good to have you tonight. I see mom online, Sister Vanessa. I see her online, dad online, Juan Senior. Uh, amen. Uh, welcome, y'all. Y'all wasn't uh, visible when I was doing my head count earlier. Um, but definitely, yeah, our, as believers, uh, we are all called to I believe we are all called to the mission field, and that mission is our very lives. We don't have to go to a foreign country, amen, to be a missionary. We are called to be missionaries to carry out the commission of Jesus Christ. So, you know, work, school, home, going to the doctor's office, going to the grocery store, that is our mission field, amen. And we've been called as believers, amen, to live out and fulfill the great commission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we are, are given, amen, the, the indwelling, the sealing and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, amen, to guide us in this life. And all we have to do, and I say all we have to do is if it's just easy, amen, but it is a lifestyle that we have to uh, live. Uh, we have to yield to and submit to the empowering, controlling, influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and every area of our lives. Amen. To uh, the praise and glory of the Father. Amen. So those are, again, other metaphors uh, for the church in the Bible. Amen. Other metaphors uh, for the church in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Just be a follower. Amen. Hear his voice and, of course, his word. Amen. It is the voice of God. Amen. Uh, I know sometimes people put up comments and I have to try to figure out what they're talking about. And I think Kizzy, uh, my wife, Kizzy, uh, is laughing at 
the tomatoes being gone. I don't think I ate one tomato off of those plants. And we had one, two, three. It might have been six plants. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, as soon as they were starting to get big and starting to turn a little red, next thing I know, they started disappearing. And I, at first, I thought maybe some squirrels got to them, but you know, then I, I saw our four-footed family member out there picking them one day. And so she, quick as they could grow, she was eating them off. So I don't even think we were able to get any of the larger tomatoes. But anyway. Um, Sounds good right now. Good sandwich with, with a lot of sliced tomatoes and pickles. Sounds good right now. But anyway, um, y'all pray for me because I get online and I get hungry and then I start talking about food and then I probably make y'all hungry as well. Amen. So we're going to end right there. You know, I'm not going to drag it out. So it's good to see everybody tonight. Thank you. I pray you got something from uh, the lesson. We're going to continue talking about church for the next couple of weeks as well. Um, I have to figure out what aspect of church we're going to talk about. So maybe we'll do some um, uh, different kind of teaching. Amen. Uh, so maybe we'll do some question and answer next time as well, uh, as much as possible with the chat. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and pray and then we'll have this last song. And, uh, you know, the Lord, the Lord says the same. We'll see you Sunday, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. Amen. I have to emphasize that because we have people tune in from various uh, time zones. And so I have to emphasize that central standard time. I have to be more conscious of that. Lord, we just give you the glory. We give you the praise, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to uh, glean from your word, Lord, to reflect, uh, Lord, on the metaphors that you use for your people, the church, the Heavenly Father, Lord. Uh, Lord, we understand, Lord, that each metaphor you, you have uh, used to describe who the church is was intentional. And Lord, I, I pray that we internalize what your word says about us, uh, Lord, and, and that we understand the benefits, Lord, that we understand the responsibility and accountability that you place on our lives, uh, Lord, for calling us your children, Lord, for calling us members of one body, Lord, for calling uh, uh, the church a royal priesthood, for calling the church the bride of Christ, uh, uh, Lord, all the different names and metaphors that you use to describe your people, Lord, is intentional, Lord. And we thank you for your word. We pray that we continue to internalize your word, that we may live it out to the praise of your glory. Lord, I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, whether they're listening live or whether they're listening to the replay. Lord, continue to surround us with your grace of protection. And Lord, I, I pray that we continue to yield to the empowering, controlling influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can bring you the glory that you deserve with our lives. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all have a blessed night. And again, if the Lord says the same, we'll see you Sunday, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, continue to pray for me as I pray for you in Jesus' name. Amen.